Maslow's levels of competency. Yeah. Um, unconscious incompetence, unconscious incompetence. Yeah, we, yeah, okay. okay. So let, let's, let's use an example of we analyze someone's gait. We see a, whether or not you want to call it dysfunctional, but we see some sort of unconscious incompetence, right? Sure. We give them a corrective and then we ask them to go through the gate cycle again and it now becomes unconscious competence. How did we skip the two main levels or why, or how do we, how do we justify that? Well, really all you did was, was alter an input. The system processed it and it spit out an output, right? Um, so let me alter your response with a different word. You didn't correct anything, right? I mean, how do you know, right? It's not a correction. All you did was get the system to behave. You gave it an input, the system processed that input, and it spits out a behavior that you like better, period. And that, that's, that's all that happened. So. I, I don't I don't think along those lines, you know, I'm more of like the um, what is it? Uh, cognitive associative uh, autonomous, right? When you talk about like skill acquisitions and things like that, that that's more along my lines of thinking. Um, and I understand what you're saying, but I, I don't think a complex adaptive system follows that same path, right? Because you know, you want to change a, you want to change somebody's squat, have them hold on to a kettlebell. You want to change it again, make the kettlebell two kilograms heavier, and you just changed it, right? Because you're not going through those stages. All you're merely doing is providing a series of, of inputs that the system has to process to spit out a behavior based on the context that you've created. So, um, you know, did they actually learn anything? Are they merely responding? Can they reproduce it later? You don't know, you don't have that information, do you? you? You just have a response, right? You have a stimulus and a response. So would, would, that, would that frame of reference, would, would looking through motor learning through his, that, those levels of competence, would you say that just loses merit simply because incompetence and competence holds a subjective value associated with whatever you're seeing yeah i mean this is not something that i spend a lot of time thinking about and so i probably can't speak intelligently about it um and again i, I think i'm more along the lines of of when i'm truly trying to acquire a skill versus merely a response based on altering the acute behavior right um basically you've just demonstrated that the system can adapt and that's a good thing under most circumstances could be a bad thing, but it's mostly a good thing. So I don't think that, that we're talking about the same, uh, same thing. Cause you, you're not talking about skill acquisition. You're merely talking about an altered response and, or an altered behavior based on the inputs provided. Right. What you want to be able to do then is to, to go where you want to go. Now you're going to have to look at, okay, how long does it take for this, this change? to stick and i would say that based on the scenario that we're talking about you probably can't tell because the context will always change right all i have to do is if, if somebody's walking on a treadmill all i have to do is change the speed of the treadmill right so now i just change states so then the question becomes can i destabilize from one state and and achieve stability in the next one based on whatever the speed of the treadmill change is you see what i'm getting at you know, we're not talking about throwing or kicking or, you know, an interception task like catching a ball or, or handwriting or whatever that skill may be, right? So I, th I think where you want to go is more of like a skill acquisition kind of a concept versus an input processing output scenario that a complex adaptive system would demonstrate. Does that make sense? I can't hear you. Yeah, yes and no. So... I mean, then, then that also depends on like your definition of a skill and the entire, pro you know, so like would, would acquisition of that new 
Um, well, there's okay. Look, can I stop you for a second? So there's yeah. a difference between a skill that is that is something that that is is somewhat repeatable and a task, which is, is merely something to meet the demands of 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 a, a context. Okay. Right? So, and so in, I think your describe what you described was was more of a task oriented scenario, not an acquisition of skill. So then what? And again, I'm willing to be wrong on that. I could call Howie Zlaznik, who is my my motor learning professor at Purdue. He's a really smart guy. He would probably know. So in in your mind, what what's the difference between a a, a, a task and a skill? Well, a a, a, ta a, a skill requires a, a level of, of of competence, right? To to make it somewhat repeatable within a, a variation. So, um, a, a, a a task could be to shoot a to shoot a a free throw, and a skill would be to consistently shoot accurately. In my mind, does that make sense? No, yeah, I like that answer a lot, actually. Yeah. So, and again, I, it's been a long time since I've looked at stuff like that. Um, but call Howie; he's at Purdue. Howie. Howie's the last name. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's actually brilliant. Does he answer emails? He actually does. Wow, how we Zelaznik. It's just like it sounds too. It's Z E L A S N I K I K. Would you be able to type that in the chat? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mm hmm He's at Purdue. You can't you can't miss him. Okay. He's he's like the staple of Purdue. If he left, <laughs> Purdue is no more. Well, I didn't. I didn't know who he was when I was taking his class, and it turns out that he's like this this amazingly brilliant guy that everybody knows who he is in like motor learning. It's the, like learning. Howie, Drew Brees, something like that. Oh, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm gonna you, post a link to his uh, Purdue page for you, Campo, in the notes. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciated. All right. I'm gonna. I'm going to catch my uh, 9 o'clock train now. Peace out. There you go. You guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one.